Hi there, this is Akrich. In previous video, we discussed how to pass the function parameter in 32-bit program. So in this video, let's discuss how to pass the function parameter in 64-bit program. So let's get started. In 64-bit program, function parameter will be loaded into register. So let's see how it will be loaded. Uh, I have wrote a simple program uh, where there are two functions main and foo. Uh, in main function, it calls the foo function uh, passing a param passing a two parameter a and b as a value 12 and 16. So let's see the assembly code of this code in GDB. GDB minus the file name is example. Let the assembly flavor as intent. Let this assemble the main function. So if you look at the fourth line, not fourth line, third line, uh, it's moving the 0x app. 0x app is nothing but it's fitting. That, that means it's loading the second parameter to ESI and first parameter to EDI. So basically EDI or RDI is the same. So RDI is a 8 byte register, EDI is a 4 byte register. So it, EDI is a half byte of RDI, that's it. ESI is a half byte of RSI. So basically first parameter will be pushed into RDI. Here it's using EDI because the value of the parameter is not more than 4 byte. So if it is more than 4 byte, it would have used RDI. So second parameter will be pushed into RSI. So this is the few list of register which holds the first first function parameter to sixth function parameter. So now we understood uh, in 64 bit program uh, parameter will be loaded into register. So utilizing the buffer overflow vulnerability, how can we load those parameter to certain register? So there is something called gadget. Gadget is a small snippet of code followed by written instruction. So I will tell you how can we find out those gadget. Before that, let's understand how it works and how can we utilize those gadgets. So as I said, gadget is a small snippet of code followed by written instruction. So this is the one of the example for gadget. So let's say this gadget is present in this address. Here pop RDI means whatever value present in the top of the stack, pop it and assign it to RDI register. So now let's say this was the value present in the stack when this gadget was executed. So now top of the stack has this value, right? 0 x 10 because stack grows downward. Now this value will be popped from the stack and it will be assigned to RDI register. Now RDI will have the value 0 x 10. Then it will execute the return instruction. So what does return instruction do is whatever the value present in the top of the stack it will be popped and compiler will go to that in that address and execute the instruction present in that address so here we set the value for rdi so in our case we have two function parameter right so now we have to set the value for rdi as well as rsi so let's say for example uh, there is a gadget pop rsi and return in this address. So let's say stack looks something like 0x15 and then address of this gadget and then 0x10. And let's give the color green. Okay. So let's say uh, this gadget is executed, pop RDI return. And now what happens? This top value will be popped and it will be assigned to RDI, RDI register. So now return instruction will be executed. And now compiler will pop this address and will, it will go to that address. That is nothing but this gadget. Now this will execute this gadget. It will pop that value present in the top of the stack and it will be assigned to RSI. Now RSI will have the value 
zero x fifteen, and then return instruction will be executed. Whatever the address present in the top of the stack will be popped, and compiler will go to that address and execute the instruction present in that address. So now we set the value for RDI and as well as RSI. So let's see how can we include this gadget in our payload. So now here we don't want to override the return address by hackage function address because before calling the hackage function address we need to set the value function parameter RDI and RSI. So that's why we will override this return address by this gadget first RDI then RSI. So now what we do? We will override this return address by this gadget, followed by the value which we need to assign to that register zero x time. Then next gadget and the value which we want to put to that register. In and after that, package function address. So let's color this cell with a green. Okay. So now what happens whenever foo function completes its execution? So whatever the memory which is allocated to this foo function will be deallocated. So this memory will be deallocated. And now this return and whatever the address present in this return address will be popped from the stack. And compiler will go to that address and execute the instruction present in that address. So, which is nothing but this gadget address, right? So now, this gadget instruction will be executed. First, it execute the pop RDI. What pop RDI does is it will pop the value present in the top of the stack and it will assign that value to RDI. Now, return instruction will be executed. So, what does return instru instruction do? It will pop the top top value from the stack and go to that address and execute the execute the instruction present in that address, right? So this address is nothing but this second gadget address. Now same thing happens. It will pop the top value present in the stack and it will assign to RSI. Then it will execute the return instruction. Now hackish function will be called. So now we call the hackish function and also before the, before calling the hackish function. We set the function parameter to RDI and RSI. So let's see how can we find out this gadget. So there is no guarantee that we are going to find a gadget looks exactly like this. So gadget might differ. We need to understand what exactly gadget is doing, and we need to build the payload according to it. So here I'm going to use the tool rope gadget in order to find out the gadget present in the binary file. You just say rope gadget binary 164. So if you don't have rope gadget installed, you can install it by using pip. You just say pip install rope gadget. So here I will hit enter. So now it will print all the gadget present in that binary file. So in our case, we need only gadget which contains the register RDI, right? So let's clear this out. Let's only grab the ga gadget which has the RDI register. So here, if you look at the third line, this is the exact gadget we are discussing, right? It's in this address. Let's copy this address and paste it here. Okay. okay. Now we need a gadget which contains the RSI register. Let's say RSI. So there is only one gadget which is corresponding to RSI. And as I said, there is no guarantee that we will get the exact gadget we discussed. So it's slightly different. It has pop RSI and also it includes pop R15. And then it will return. So we need to build the payload according to this gadget. So let's copy this address and paste it here. And gadget is something like this, right? R pop R15.
So now our payload looks something like this, right? So first we will fill the dummy value here. Sorry, 0x, 41, 41, 41, 41, and so on. And in return address, we will fill the address of this gadget. Then we will fill the value to be assigned to that RDI, right? Which is 0x10. Was that 0x10, right? Yeah. Then we will fill the address of this register RSI. So now here it also included register R15. First it will pop the value present in the top of the stack and assign it to RSI. Then again it will pop the value present in the top of the stack and assign it to R15. Then it will return. So we need to fill two value one is for rsi another one is for r15 so it does not matter what is the value to be filled in r15 because our program is not going to use r15 register i will fill 0 0x0 zero zero. and then what is this then we will fill the package function address so first find the padding to be added then find out what is the address of package function and then we will build the payload using a python so here i already find out the padding length of the padding and uh, address of the package function uh, using gdb if you don't know how to find out that please watch the video appearing in the icon so let's import the Pound tool. And let's create the process. Process and executable file name. This is that is one sixty four. Then print out whatever the string we received from this executable file. And now we will build the payload. Padding it mm, fifty six land and then address of the gadget. So this is the address of the gadget. Pop RDI P sixty four. Then value value is ten. Then for RSI, and also it contains for one file, right? Which is the address is this. Copy this and paste it here. Then value value for RSI, which is fifteen zero x fifteen. Value for R one five. It does not matter what is the value in R one five zero x zero. Then address of accuracy. P sixty four. Sorry, this is the address package. Then send the payload to process um, padding plus pop RDI plus value to the RDI. Then pop RSI and value to the RSI, then R on five, 
and finally hack which function address and let's print out whatever the character we receive after sending the payload and lastly we call the function interactive and here it should be clean and then everything is right yeah the file name is not 1-64 it's 161 oops good let's run the code let's see what happens yeah we got the shell so where am i yeah so now we understood how to pass the function parameter in 64-bit program so until then stay tuned like the video and subscribe the channel